Okay, good morning, fourth graders. It is Monday, April 20th. Um, today we are going to be starting Unit 8. Uh, so we're skipping a page in your math journal because uh, we finished up Unit 7 and there's really no way to get you that test. So um, we're going to move on to Unit 8. And Unit 8 we're kind of bringing together all the things that we've worked on throughout the year. And uh, cracking the numbers story is going to be using all the different functions, addition, subtraction, multipli multiplication, division, to solve problems. So this is page 270 in your math journal. You're going to need your math journal. Scratch paper is essential here because there isn't a whole lot of workroom. So you're going to need that scratch paper in order to be able to do all the things that we need to do to solve this problem. Again, page 270 in your math journal. Uh, it says, every year at Blythe Elementary School, excuse me, every year Blythe Elementary School holds a contest. Each class is given seven problems about the school. The answers are part of a code that tells where a hidden prize is located. The class that cracks the code and gets to the location first wins the prize. Help Mrs. Fitzgerald's class win the prize by solving the problems below and cracking the code. So over the next two days, we'll work on cracking the code. So let's take a look at problem one. The high school, excuse me, the school's custodian, this is the first problem we got to solve, the school custodian, Mr. Granger, brought every pencil he found on the floor this week to the school lost and found. At the end of the week, there were 126 pencils. That's important. We need to know how many pencils there are. In the lost and found. Mr. Granger said he found three pencils in one classroom and five pencils in each of three classrooms. He then found an equal number of pencils in each of the remaining nine classrooms. Okay, there's a lot of numbers there. So especially for this one, I'm going to try and break it down for you the way that I would do it and then hopefully what we'll be able to do is when we read through these you can try them on your own and or if you get stuck let me get you going and then you actually do the math. So the first thing I see is we need to know that there's 126 pencils. In one classroom there were three pencils. That's also important. So if you want to think about that as a problem that would be like three times one. And then he had found five pencils in three classrooms. So that would be like five times three. And then the rest of the classrooms, the rest of the nine, they had the same thing. So, but we don't know what that number is. So that could be 9 times p equals whatever number we're going to have at the end. So what we need to do first here is take this 126 pencils and because the question is how many pencils did he find in each of the nine classrooms? So 9 times something is going to give us this number. Now we probably won't do it with multiplication. It's probably going to end up being division. but first thing we need to do is start with our 126 pencils. So we have 126 pencils. In one classroom, he found three. So that would be like 126 minus three. So, probably want to do that. Pretty easy. Six minus three is three. 20 minus 0 is 20, and 100 minus 0 is 100. So take away those three, we're down to 123 pencils. But in five, or in three of the classrooms, he found five. Five times three is 15. So we're going to also want to take away this 15, because they aren't left in the number of pencils that are left for the entire thing. So that would be 123 minus 15. You can't do 3 minus 5, so you cross out the 20, we make it a 10. This becomes 13. You should go ahead and finish this. 13 minus 5 is 
8. I had to think there for a second. You add up, 5 plus 5 is 10, 3 more is 8, so 8 is how many would take to get 15. Uh, 1 minus 1 is 0, so we're left with 108 pencils. So we can take this 108, and it's going to go over here. 9 times something equals 108. But that's probably not what I would do to solve it. What I would probably do to solve it, and i got to create a little bit more. This is why you want scratch paper, because you can see I don't have a whole lot of room to work here. What I would probably do to solve this is take 108 and divide it by 9, because every multiplication problem is a division problem. Every division problem is a multiplication problem. They're just flip-flop. So if you look at this and go, 108 divided by 9 equals P. So, you can look at this and think, how many 9's can go into 10? Because 9 can't go into 1, we're going to look at the 10 right here. And of course, the answer to that is 1. You should try and finish this. Pause me and finish this problem. 9 times 1 is 9, that is 0. Add a 0 and subtract. 8 minus 0 is 8. 10 minus 9 is 1. Okay, here's why this makes sense. 9 times 10 is 90. We just took away 90 of the pencils. So every classroom at least has 10 in there, but we still have 18 pencils left. Because it's like you're taking the pencils and dividing them into groups of, or into 9 groups. So we went 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. We made 9 groups of 10. Now here we're looking at what times 9 is 18? 2. 9 times 2 is 18. Let's subtract. So the answer is that each of those classrooms had 12 pencils. So the answer for the first one is 12. Now we're going to look at the next. Oh, got to put the pencil down. And try to do that. Now here's the next one. Miss Granger walked by the cafeteria after lunch. She saw that the chairs around the nine tables had been moved. Or Mr. Granger, excuse me. He saw twelve chairs at each of the five tables, five chairs at each of three tables, and six chairs at one table. He moved the chairs so that each table had the same number of chairs. How many chairs did he put at each table? So, what you need to do here is one, we need, or first we need to figure out how many total chairs there are. And then we need to take that, and because there's nine tables, we need to take that number and divide by nine. So, what we have, though, is that we have 12 chairs at 5 tables. Well, the way I did that, it's going to be hard for you to see the other numbers. We have 5 chairs at 3 tables, and we have 6 chairs at 1 table. So, what I see when I see this, I see multiplication problems. You should solve these three multiplication problems. 12 times 5. 5 times 3, 6 times 1. And then add those all together because that's going to be how many chairs there are total. You go ahead and try that. Hit pause when you're ready to watch me do it. Hit play. All right, so I have 12 times 5. I have 5 times 3. And I have 6 All right, I think the easiest one is 6 times 1. 6 times 1 is 6. And 5 times 3, 5, 10, 15. And this one is probably the most challenging one, but it's actually not that bad. 5 times 10, we should think of this as 10 and 2. 10 plus 2 is 12. 5 plus 10 is 50. 5 times 2 is 10. So 5 times 12 is 60. 
And now we need to take those 60, 15, and 6 and add them up. Five and six is 11. I get 81. Now some of you have probably already figured this out in your head, that we have 81 chairs and nine tables. So there's two ways to look at this. You can either think nine tables times a certain number of chairs equals 81 chairs, or you can do 81 divided by 9. It's really your choice. Either one works. I don't care which way you do, but give that a try right now. Give me a pause and try and solve that. Okay, so I know that I can't do 10. 9 can't go into 8, and I know that 9 times 10 is going to be 90, and that's too big. Um, if you were stuck, a good place to start might have been 5, but the answer is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. When you subtract, you get zero. So the answer here for the second one is nine. All right, we're going to do one more today because then we will go over your math boxes. Well, actually, we might do two. We'll see how long this takes. Okay, this next one. Every year, students enter artwork in a state competition. This year there were 137 winners. Of these, 25 came from of these, 25 came from private and home schools. The rest were from eight school districts. Each district had the same number of winners. The winners from our school district came from seven schools, including ours. All the schools in our district had the same number of winners. Okay. So a lot to dissect there. The first thing I know is that there are 137 winners. And I know that 25 of them came from private and home schools. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to take that away. We've got 137 students, 137 winners, and the home school and private school ones don't count towards their numbers. So we have to subtract that. Go ahead and take that and solve that. 5 minus 5 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 10. Because it's a 30 minus a 20, so you get a 10. And then the 100 has nothing. So you're at 110 left. Okay, so those came from eight school districts. Each, oh, I messed that up. I'm sorry. This should have been a 7, which should have made that a 2. My apologies. My apologies for that. Because 110 wouldn't have made sense. It came from 8 school districts and each, each district had the same number of winners. So we need to come over here and we need to take our answer from there. 112 and divide by 8. I need you to do that right now. Okay, so when we're doing that, we're going to use red so we can see the difference. 8 times 10 is 80, and I subtract. 2 minus 0 is 2, 11 minus 8 is 3. So I end up with 32. And now I'm thinking, what times 8 is 32? 4. 8 times 4 is 32. And 32 minus 32 is 0. So that means from the winners from their school district, there were how many winners from their school district? 14. But those 14 came from seven schools. So that would mean we've got to take now we'd have to take that 14 and divide it by 7. Try that. What times 7 is 14? The answer is 2. 7 times 2 is 14, subtract. And each school got 2 winners. All right, remember as you're doing this to 
pause me, and then you'll be able to actually do the work on your own. Try doing the work on your own before just copying what I do. We'll do the last one. There are 346 students in the school. In the morning, many students go to special classes. 21 go to music, 16 to technology, 24 to gym, 19 to art, and 10 to Spanish. The rest stay in regular classes. Eight regular classes each have 27 students. The rest of the regular class classes have only eight students. How many total teachers are in the school? Okay. Again, a lot to digest there. I want to make sure I got all the information. Eight regular classes have 27 students, and the rest of the regular classes have Okay. So, we got to work our way down. We're working our way down from 346. And that's important. We need to take all of these, and I want you just to think about what we need to do with those. We need to add those together, because we need to know how many students out of the 346 are going to special classes. We only need the one plus mark there down at the bottom to tell us that's what we're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add all those up. One and six is seven. 4 more is 11, 9 makes 20. Carry that over here. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, 2 more is 7, 8, and 9. So that means we have 90 students there. So, of the 346 students, we can take 90 away from that. The other important thing to remember here is that each of these, at the end result, we need teachers. But we have to figure this out, too, because we need to know how many are left in regular classes. If we're tallying up the teachers, we need one for music, one for technology, one for gym, one for art, one for Spanish. So right now, we are at five teachers. I'm going to put that right there so we remember that. Okay? So, to figure out how many students we have left, we need to subtract. 6 minus 0 is 6. Can't do that. This becomes a 2. This becomes 14. 14 minus 9, 5. Bring down your 2. So we're left with 256 students. Now, the other thing that we know is that we're going to have 8 regular classes with 27 students. So we have the 5 teachers. Now we have another 8. But we need to figure out the rest of the regular classes have eight. So we gotta figure out how many students we have left for those classes with just eight. So we also need to do 27 times eight. And to do this, do eight times seven and eight times 20 and add them together. Go ahead and try that right now and then you can check your work versus mine. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and solve this. Uh, 8 times 20, there's going to be a 0. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 7, 5, 6, 7, 8. 56 equals 7 times 8. 0 and 6 is 6. 5 and 6 is 11. Carry that. I get 216. Okay. So, we've got 256 students. from, uh, that we had t left after we took away all of these, and those eight classes have 216 in them. So we need to take that away to figure out how many students are left. Go ahead and solve that subtraction problem. Okay, hopefully you solved this. Six minus six is zero, five minus one is four, and two minus two is zero. So we're down to 40 students left for the remaining the rest of the regular classes have only eight students. The final step in this, to figure out how many teachers 
we know that there are 40 students. There are eight in each class. You need to go 40 divided by eight. Your answer is going to go over here for how many teachers, and then you can add those up. So go ahead and solve this. Okay? Hopefully you solved it. You paused me. You did this. 8 times 5 is 40, and you subtract to get 0, which would be 5 more teachers. So to figure all this out, we had five teachers, one for music, one for technology, one for gym, one for art, one for Spanish. We had eight regular classes, mentions that right there. So five and eight. And then we had 40 students left for the remaining regular classes. Eight times five is 40. So five and five is 10, eight more, we should have gotten 18. All right, your assignment on your own today is on math boxes page. 272, and I'm going to go over those with you right now. All right, this one says use a protractor to draw angle ACB with a measure of 90 degrees. Even if you don't have a protractor, you can try and make that. That's a specific kind of angle that you should know how to make. So. What they want you to do is draw that angle, but remember when you draw an angle, this is not the angle you need to draw. This is not the right angle, but you need to remember that angles have a vertex and points, and they go on forever and ever and ever and ever. So what they're asking you to do here, let's say that I label this one D, E, F. There's my angle, D, E, F. should have an arc in there. They're asking you to connect points a and B, this would be like if I connected points D and F. And I want you to make a triangle, okay? Uh, on the next one, number two, don't forget to tell me what kind of triangle that is. Number two, uh, this one, A is just adding, B you're looking for the missing one. So if I went six ace plus five, I can make it bigger. If I went 6 ace plus 5 ace, how much more would I need to get to 14 ace? What I want you to do on this one is I want you to do B and then I don't pick another one. Pick one, but you have to do B. So pick one other one, but do B. And I'll solve those all tomorrow. Okay, on this one, we're talking about unit fractions. Remember, uh, unit fractions are simply, so for example, if I have, I want to make sure this one isn't up there, if I had three fifths, the unit fraction for three fifths is one fifth. It's just whatever the denominator is with one over the top. And if they ask you a question like this, if you look, 12 sixths, is the twelfth multiple, so that means that three fifths would be the third multiple of one fifth. One third or one fifth, two fifths, three fifths. It's the third multiple. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you the conversion factors for this, even though I think you should know them. Did that again. Uh, to change gallons to quarts, it's times four. There's four quarts in a gallon. We made that conversion sheet at home. Uh, for pints, each pint is two cups. Because if you remember our chart we made, okay, that's a gallon. There's four quarts. Uh, each quart is made up into two pints, and each pint has two cups in it. So take your number of pints and multiply it by two. Okay, uh, this one we didn't really talk about. Five cups uh, multiplied by eight. Okay, each quart is two pints. For this one, you you got to divide by two. Ten divided by two. And finally, this one: how many cups 
a uh, quart would have four cups, so multiply by four. Remember, you can always go back and pause this to see these if you need them while you're working. And last but not least, this one. Explain how you solved this problem. The measure of angle BTC is 112 degrees. The measure of ATB is 43 degrees. So uh, find the measure of ATC. Just explain how you would solve that and get me the answer. All right, guys. Thank you for all your work today, and we'll see you tomorrow.